video, we'll take the food ordering system scenario from the Visual Paradigm website that was modified for this example, and we'll create a context diagram from it. And in the context diagram, we're going to have the process, which is the food ordering system. We'll have the external entities, also called agents. That's the supplier, the kitchen, the manager, and the customer and all four of those will interact with the system. Now if we had a real full business model in, such as for Burger King or McDonald's we would have a lot more external entities that would interact with this process but this is a simple diagram for you to see as a, an example. You'll also have the data flow which is the going to be in between the process and the external entities so to start off with, what you could do is you could take the draw.io diagram that I provided for you in the slides from Blackboard. And then from there, what you can do is go to File, make a copy, and you could save it in any number of different places, but we'll go ahead and save it in Google Drive. And we'll just call it the Dataflow Diagram Notation. I'm going to put a 2 on mine just so I don't have duplicate files. I can find this one easily and remove it later. Now once you have that, you'll be able to change and modify your data flow diagram information. So you should be able to move these around now or edit them or delete them. What I suggest that you do is you go into your scratch pad your scratch pad will probably not be populated already so what you do is you drag each of the elements that you each of the four elements that we use for data flow diagramming into the scratch pad area if you don't see the scratch pad go up to view and make sure that the scratch pad has a check mark next to it you'll see once I remove the check mark it goes away and there we have it I've already done that, so you see in mine that the scratch pad elements are there, the four elements of the data flow diagram. We're not going to be using all four of those when we create the context diagram, though. And think about that, which one is not in a context diagram? Which of the four elements? We have data store, process, external entity, and data flow. So once you have a copy of the data flow diagram notation and you've taken each of these elements and put it into your scratch pad now you'll have that element available when you go to the next step you could build your context diagram from what we have here already just moving everything around deleting what you don't need um, what I suggest you do though is go into file and create new and create a blank diagram which is the default and we'll call that food ordering system context diagram and you call it whatever you'd like as long as it makes sense to you and you'll be able to find it again now this is on the draw.io website so you can go to draw.io I've linked mine to my account already so now you have a blank screen that you work on it and you see I have the graph on it you can remove the graph if you want the grid like that and you can add it in once you have your grid system on there you can actually go over to your grid and change the grid and as you change that you'll see you get more or fewer of the squares in there no particular setup that I have I just chose it at 10 point so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our process so we have our process from the scratch pad take this process and stick it in the middle of the work area and you have a process in there if you double click on the text that's in there you'll find that you can change the text so we're gonna call it food ordering system Now that's our process. When you do the context diagram, we just have the one food ordering system element in there. And once we have that, when we do a context level diagram, generally 
that's referred to as the level zero diagram. So we're going to also put a zero in front of that. So we know that that's the zero level diagram. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Now, when we have our food ordering system, we're going to be communicating and the data or the information is going to flow outside of the food ordering system. And one of the places that'll go, you might think off the top of your head, what's the person that or entity that's going to be involved with us right off from the start? And that would be our customer. So we'll click on the external entity, drag it into our work area, and we'll change that to customer. Now, what's nice about draw.io is once you have the, the elements on the page, you can click on and drag on the triangle over to the adjacent item and or element, and it creates the arrow for you. So once you have that, you can also double click on the line, and it will allow you to put in your text. So we now have the customer order that goes from the customer to the food ordering system. Now it really doesn't matter on the size. We can change the size of the food ordering system if we want. Uh, we can change the size of the customer if we want. Now the other thing we're going to have, what happens after the customer is eaten? Well, we take the bill to the customer. So we'll go ahead and take the text here and draw it straight to the customer. And from here, you can double tech, click on the text, and we have the bill that we can add in there. If you remember in my earlier comments, I said there were three others involved. That's the supplier, the kitchen, and the manager. So let's go ahead and add in the supplier, because we have to get our food somewhere. So we'll call this supplier. And let's put in our other entities as well. We'll put in the kitchen. And we'll put in the manager. So you always have the manager involved. So what we're going to happen, what will happen is in the food ordering system as we run low on supplies, we'll get a hold of the supplier and we'll send in a purchase request to the supplier. So that's the information flow that way. And we're going to order some inventory. So we'll call this data flow inventory order. Next, we'll have the customer order that went into the food ordering system. Now that's going to go to the kitchen, so the kitchen knows what it is that they're supposed to make. And finally, we're going to bring in the manager. And what is the, that the manager is going to want to know about? Well, the manager is going to want to know that we are actually getting low on supplies because the manager is then going to go ahead and place the order. So in this case, the manager is going to be receiving reports from the system. And then the manager will send out the inventory. So I do have it a little bit out of sequence here in, our, in the explanation. But the manager will go ahead and do the inventory order back into the system. So it starts out with the customer. Customer has an order, goes into the food ordering system. And remember now, we're talking about the data, the information in the system, not the actual product. So we're not talking about hamburgers here. We're talking about the data that goes along with running the food ordering system. Once it goes into the food ordering system, it then goes out at, to the kitchen where the kitchen will make the product. And at the same time, or as another output of the food ordering system, the, in, the inventory reports or the reports of the inventory levels will go to the manager 
and then the manager will see that the inventory is getting low, send the inventory order back to the system, and through the system it goes to the supplier, and there is where you have your context diagram. Now the context diagram is the entrance of the data flow model. It contains only one process, and it doesn't show any data store. If you notice, all we have are the external entities, the data flow, and the actual process itself. We don't have the data store in our diagram. I hope you found this video helpful.